Good morning, Véronique. Good morning, Jean-Pierre. Thank you to welcome us in the, the historical cellar of la Maison Joseph Drouin in Bonn. You're very welcome. You have been working for a long time with those three village appellations. Can you tell us a little bit more about their characteristics? With pleasure, I will try. So, to the north, you have the village of gevray chambertin gevray chambertin very well known, appellation, and it is known because the wines of Gevray have this magnificent structure. They are full-bodied, they have beautiful tannins, You can taste them when the wine is young, they're very present. But the wines also have this beautiful balance and very long finish. The wines of Georges Chambertin have a very good aging potential. You can keep them for a long time in your cellar. If you want to enjoy them young, no problem. You might want to decant the wine to give a little bit of air to the wine. But if you are going to keep the wine for a long time, usually No problem. How many, how many years do you think you can keep a bottle of Gervais Chambertin? If it's a good vintage, 15 years, 20 mm. years, more. And if you go to the Grand Cru, sometimes we're lucky to come across a bottle that is 50 years old and Fantastic. still delicious. The problem can be the cork. You need to make sure mm. the cork is still good. That's important. After Gervais Chambertin, if we move to the south, to the village of Chambol Musigny, the opposite in style. The Chambol Musigny wines, they are very delicate, very elegant. We say the tannins are very noble, very noble tannins. We mean by this that the refinement the wines express is fantastic. The wines are very silky. When you drink them, they just go down your throat. This is nothing that hurts your tongue or your palate. Just very silky and delicious. That doesn't mean they do not age well. If you keep a Chambol Musigny in your cellar for a long time, you will also have a good surprise. It's just the nature of the wine is different. And when you will have a dish to prepare, you will make your choice, something a bit more strong with the Gevray Chambertin, and maybe something more delicate with Chambol Musigny. So you will have the choice to adapt. And then if we move to the center, we have the village of Moray saint denis Maybe not as well known. The name of the village may not be as well known as his famous neighbors, but some of the wines from this village are very well known. Clos de Tard, Clos des Lambrais, Clos Saint-Denis. The Moray wines, for me, combines a little bit the quality of both Chambol Musigny and Gevray. I mean, they do have the power the texture, but also the finesse and the subtlety of Chambol Musigny. Very interesting wine. They're very balanced and they also age very well. So not to forget Moray Saint-Denis. And Jean-Pierre, in a little anecdote, in the village of Moray Saint-Denis, since I was very, very young, we've been working with a brewer in the village. And this brewer, for 50 years now, every year, we get his uh, production. But we always go to taste the wines in his salon. So what he adores to do when we go there, we taste the wine, and then he picks in the salon a bottle, blind. It's a, we have to do the blind tasting. He knows what the wine is, of course, and we have to guess. Every year, it's the same exercise. And you can see in his eye, he's very excited to see if we get the wine or not. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It's always a great moment. And that's the beauty in Burgundy. You go to a salon, and usually you will stay a long time to taste with the vigneron. I wish I could be there. It's a fantastic <laughs> story. I mean, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's nice to share, you know. Uh, it's very nice to share. Yeah, that's yes. great. So, um, you know, all those villages uh, have many, many different climats, uh, and some of them are classified premier cru. Uh, yes. Which one do you prefer? Do you have some uh, climat you like very much, or do you have something to tell about it? Uh, Yes, of course, there is some climat where our heart is a little more attracted, I would say. So in, in Gevray Chambertin, there is two climats that I find really um, interesting, is the climat Les Cazetiers. So Les Castiers is ne next to Clos Saint-Jacques, and this climat is facing the sunrise, so it's, it's facing the east. 
the soil, the nature of the soil, gives in the Casetier, Gevray Chambertin Les Castiers, a wine that is quite structured. So speaking of the structure, this is a fairly good example of what you can expect from a premier cru of uh, Gevray Chambertin Les Castiers. Something with good structure, nice balance, nice length, but don't expect to have something very soft. And opposite of Les Castiers, you have Lavaux Saint-Jacques. There, the nature of the soil and the exposure makes the wine a little more softer, a little more delicate. So you still have the full-bodied wine from Gevray Chambertin, but maybe a little more delicacy, especially on the finish of the wine. Hmm, that looks absolutely fantastic, those wines. Uh, and in Maurice Saint Denis. Alors, in Maurice Saint Denis, Maurice Saint Denis has a couple of very interesting premier cru. There is two that I find quite interesting. Is Clos Sorbet that you can see spelled with an E or E T, it, but it's the same climat. Or also you have the Clos des Ormes. So these two are I find very interesting because again they combine different qualities. The Clos Sorbet is the, the one that has, uh, it's in the center, close to the center of the village, and it has a very nice core of the wine. I find it straight, um, again with, with always this very nice finish that you find a lot in Pinot Noir, but the, the wine is pure and, and straight. The Clos des Ormes, has uh, maybe on the nose, maybe on the the bouquet is maybe a little bit more expressive than the uh, Clos Sorbet will be. Oh, yeah, well, quite different, but they're, they're very close to each other. They're very close to each other. I mean, you walk from one to the other, mm -hmm. but consistency, you will find these nuances repeat every year. And but this, so this is why we have them with different names. Yeah, well, yes. very interesting. And Chambord Musigny. And then Chambord Musigny, there's again a lot of very, very beautiful premier cru. Hard to choose, but I would say my two favorites are Chambord Musigny Les Baudes. And Les Baudes is located just below Bonnemar, so we are in the northern part of Chambord Musigny. Then you cross the village and you arrive in Chambord Musigny Les Amoureuses. So Les Amoureuses lies just below Les Musigny, the famous Grand Cru. So these two, these two premier cru also quite different. The Bonnemar side, so Les Baudes below Bonnemar, will have the Bonnemar texture. So Bonnemar is not the soft, the very soft Chambord Musigny we know from the other side. It has tannins, very elegant tannins, but the tannins are there. When the wine is young, you find it quite uh, structured. Uh, with a very good aging potential. But these wines need time before they really develop their full well, bouquet, uh, fragrance and complexity. They're good young, but they will be better with a little bit of age. Now, if we move to uh, the Amoureuse, there it's uh, the voluptuous, the delicate, the sensual, the finesse. It's, it's really, you, you move, you're getting close to Le Musigny. Um, I like to say it's like wearing a cashmere sweater. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this wine. It, if you if you drink them, the finish will be unbelievably long. They're very, very soft. Again, wines that age very well. And you will pair these wines, these two premier cru, um, maybe with food that can be closer in, in style, but maybe for the amoureux, something even more refined than the boat. But I'm sure the wine lovers do know that because, you know, the reputation of the, the Les Amoureux is so great. Yes. But, you know, lots, yes. lots of people they just love the, this wine. Yes, yes. And sometimes we believe that maybe part of Les Amoureux could have been a Grand Cru. It's perfect that it is not, but it's true that in the mm. bottle you have a quality. And um, for the story, Chambol Musigny, the wines of Chambol Musigny in general uh, were very great favorites of a famous uh, movie maker, Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, was it? Yes, he was a good customer of the, of the, the Maison de Rouen, and he would call my father to ask him news about his Chambol Musigny. And the story says that he was giving to the, the ladies of, you know, that were doing the movies for him some Chambol Musigny before they would get in some uh, pretty dramatic situation in, in the movies. But he really loved those wines. They were very lucky. They were very actually. lucky. Actually. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, so all those promakers seems to be uh, absolutely uh, 
great and fantastic. Uh, but what about the Grand Cru? Ah, what about the Grand Cru? Well, the first, they're very hard to find, but when you can find them, this is the, the best of the best. It's what you aim for, that's what you dream for. And again, if we move from Gevray-Chambertin to Chambol musigny Gevray-Chambertin is very lucky because there is nine Grand Cru in Gevray-Chambertin and fairly large Grand Cru, except one. So you have the famous Chambertin, Chambertin Claude Bez, Chapelle Chambertin, Griot Chambertin, if I had to pick one, and one that I know well is Griot Chambertin. Griot is probably the most refined of the Grand Cru of Gevray. It has some delicacy, it has extremely lovely bouquet on the nose, kind of violet sort of flavors, more than some of his neighbors are maybe more fruity, but this one has this delicate texture, good structure, but beautiful bouquet. And then obviously the Clos de Bèze is a little more spicy on the spicy side, I, I find. And then the Chambertin is, is the one, is the king, we say, the king of Gevray Chambertin, is very structured. This is the wine that Napoleon used to love and had uh, regularly an order for before battle or when he had to go to Lille d'Elbe. That was one of the wine that went with him. So well, he had a good taste. He had a very good taste, mm. yes. Now, if we move to Moret Saint Denis, Moret Saint Denis has uh, so some very famous like Claude de la Roche, which is, is entirely on the Moret Saint Denis village appellation, and then you have uh, Claude de Tarre, uh, Claude de Lambre, Claude Saint Denis. So there's only five, and then a little bit of Bonne Mar. So Bonne Mar stretches most of the appellation is on Chambol Musigny, but there's a little bit of Bonne Mar on Moret Saint Denis. And in these, the, there's one that I know uh, a little bit is Clos Saint Denis, which gave its name that was mm. attached to Moret. And Clos Saint Denis maybe doesn't have the the lush of Musigny or the, the power of a Chambertin, but again combines a little bit of both qualities and is a very interesting wine. Needs to be, uh, you know, looked and, and discovered. Yeah, probably, because it's not very well known. It's not very mm. well known. Claude de Tarre is, is maybe yeah. more well known. And when you move to the south of the village, it's, it's a small village, but if you move south to the village, again, you find these nuances between structure, in the structure between tannins and silkiness of the, of the tannins. The Claude de Tarre is, is a wine that mm. is known for its uh, long life, but also very intense body. Jean-Pierre, if we move to the south, we arrive in the village of Chambol Musigny with two very prestigious Grand Cru, Bonne Mar, to the north, then the village, and then to the south, Chambol Musigny. Two amazing Grand Cru. Bonne Mar, the one that has more structure of Chambol Musigny, in the Chambol Musigny world, the Bonne Mar will be the one that is a little more masculine, I would say, a little more uh, dense, with very deep aromatics, very intense flavors, but with a fairly important structure. And then you move to Musigny, and then you arrive to this world of uh, amazing aromatics, amazing texture, amazing finish. When the wine is young, sometimes it's a question I'm asked, how can you judge a Grand Cru when it is very young? There's something that will never cheat in a wine in Burgundy, whatever the level of appellation, is the finish on the palate. When you take a glass of Musigny, it goes on and on for a long time. And the wine, even if the wine is a little shy, a little close because it's young, but the finish is there, you can be uh, sure it has a great future. Sometimes the wine is already quite open. Some vintages are more easier to, to approach when young. But this is what you will find in Musigny, something extremely elegant, very complex, with a beautiful long finish. You need to pair something interesting, uh, not something too big, too strong. A Lièvre à la Royale would be too much. I think I would do this with Gevray Chambertin. Musigny requires something quite delicate. Even a fish, maybe, sometimes will work with, uh, mm. with a Musigny. But that's a world. The amateur love to try and drink Musigny, as we love to drink it, and the producer love to or would love to produce Musigny. It's a fantastic wine to make. It's, it's a, a fabulous lovely. wine. I do agree. 
you like it. Oh, I love it. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite. Yes, and mm. you agree that with food you have to pair something quite elegant. I think it, it needs a very, very delicate food, you know, because the characteristic of the wine is the elegancy and uh, you cannot really uh, uh, go over the wine with a strong, you know, tasty food. So you need something very, very tasty, yes. very fine, very elegant. Uh, yes. I do agree with it. Yes. yes. And we are lucky that a lot of people come and visit Bourgogne. We adore it. We know it's not a very easy region, but once you come here and we meet our ambassadors, really, and explain this terroir, this climat, we love to see people too that understand. And then they became our fabulous ambassador, like Napoleon was one, like Hitch Hitchcock was one, like plenty of uh, fantastic, um, well-known or not well-known, that doesn't matter. But to teach our terroir, our region of Bourgogne is very important to us. But we know our wines will be enjoyed and shared by people who learn, who are interested in, in our wine, and that's very precious for us. And so we, we like when they come and visit. Well, you are a great teacher, because honestly, you know, uh, we had a fantastic time with you, Veronique. Uh, uh, it seems so clear now. I mean, uh, we do understand all those characteristics, all those uh, wine from Bourgogne. And thank you very much for that. That was a great, great uh, moment. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. My, my great pleasure.